is cryptocurrency a good asset to have in your portfolio? Look, in this video, I'm gonna cover why I believe cryptocurrency is a great asset, not only to buy, but to start dollar cost averaging in over the next few years. And I'll show you exactly why backed by data. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Robert Miller. I have an e-commerce company and we talk about crypto on this channel quite a bit. Uh, we love to build digital cash flow and then build and create digital wealth. And so that's exactly what this channel is about and the videos are about, so go ahead and check them out. But let's go ahead and hop in on why I believe that Bitcoin specifically is going to be a great investment over the next few years, setting you up for three to five years from now. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, when I got started in cryptocurrency, what are the fundamentals? Like, how do I actually buy crypto? What do I actually need to do to store it? How does it all work? And why is there any value in Bitcoin anyways? Like I get maybe the mechanisms of it, how to send it, how to you know move it. But why is that so powerful? And why is that such a valuable asset? And if you have been looking at cryptocurrency prices and coins and all that kind of stuff, people are typically just throwing money, gambling into projects left and right and they're not really looking at the fundamentals of what the project's actually doing or what the actual value of the protocol is and so if you're new to cryptocurrency bitcoin is really a storehold of wealth think of it like a digital gold meaning that people will store their capital in the value of a certain commodity now bitcoin is really just seen as a storehold of wealth what i mean by that is let's say that you had bought an, an iphone 5 five years ago right or 10 years ago whenever they came out and that was a thousand dollars right and flash forward to today this iphone 13 or whatever it is is now a thousand dollars so the value of your $1,000, just looking at it one-to-one, -one, has gone down if you were saving in iPhones. Like if you were just buying iPhones as your storehold of wealth and you wanted to accumulate a lot of them, you would have made a really bad decision because the value of the iPhones goes down because that depreciates, technology gets better, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's what people do with gold. They buy gold because it's a hedge against the value of their currency. So if you see gold go up against the US dollar, it's either that the gold is becoming more and more scarce and that it's harder for people to get their hands on gold or the US dollar has been printed and devalued and so gold is more valuable and so it takes more US dollars in order to buy the gold. And that's what we're seeing with Bitcoin is that as more money has been printed and put into the system, we're seeing that Bitcoin is not only becoming more scarce because people are buying it, but also it's in the protocol of Bitcoin to stay finite. Okay, there's only going to be 21 million of these coins and there's 19 million out in circulation right now. And the remaining 2 million are gonna be mined as people continue to use the protocol. That's a different conversation. But the point is, is that if you store your money into other assets and those assets then appreciate, you then tend to feel or look or become more wealthy just because those assets are inflating in value. And typically you're not really doing anything. You're not working for the additional dollars that that house or that Bitcoin or that any of these asset classes, you know, rise in value and that more money's put into them, right? That's how they, that's why they call it investing or, you know, passive income because it's already being done for you and the appreciation of those assets you don't have control of it's market driven and so when we look at okay if those are the fundamentals of investing finding either businesses assets like stocks real estate or even cryptocurrencies to invest in to set myself up for the future and have a storehold of wealth or have my money that i've earned over the past you know 30 40 50 60 years whatever the case is to actually support me in the future to live a great lifestyle maybe just have cash flow every single month whatever the case is then where do i need to go for growth and what can i expect to hit in order to live the lifestyle that I want, right? So with Bitcoin in particular, I believe, this is not financial advice or anything, but I believe you probably have some of the highest upside because not only has it had, you know, hundreds of thousands of percent growth over the past 10 years, year over year, but if you know the finite and the scarcityness of Bitcoin and you understand that fully, and then you understand the fiat system where things can be printed infinitely, it's almost a no brainer. And it really just clicks once you understand that there's a finite supply of Bitcoin and how easy it is to use, people are gonna be starting to move to a Bitcoin standard, a mobile future and a cryptocurrency driven future. Now, again, I do think there's gonna be stable coins by the governments. I do think there's gonna be a whole regulatory system around how we're gonna transact and interact. But from a storehold of wealth perspective, Bitcoin has been that. And over the past you know, few cycles that we've had with Bitcoin, uh, a lot of statistics, a lot of data charts have come out really to start to monitor this thing, right? Bitcoin and crypto kind of have a life of its own as it's driven by primarily retail investors right now. 
And you know, there's some indicators that have been built in order to see when is it a good time to buy historically, or when it's been a bad time to buy, or when it's a good time to sell, et cetera. And so this is a really simple tool that you can use. It's called Bitcoin, uh, look into bitcoin.com. And this is the two year moving average multiplier. So the green line is the two year moving average. And then the red line is five X of that. And that's really been a range in which Bitcoin kind of hits during cycles. And historically under the green line has been a great time to buy. And historically over the red line has been a great time to sell just because it's overbought, right? So if we look at each cycle and it first came out back in, you know, 20 or 2008, 2009, you know, the first cycle that this really starts to track is 2012 to 2014. And then we saw more of a consolidation around 2015, 2016. That's when I personally heard about it. I was buying in a cryptocurrency, you know, at a thousand bucks at about, you know, 800 bucks. And I just kept buying and buying and buying. And luckily I hit a pretty nice cycle from about a thousand bucks to 19,000, right? Now I didn't know about this tool at that time uh, or knew about these indicators. I just thought that it was kind of bubblish during that time. And it was a good time to sell. So I had sold and, you know, I continued to buy Bitcoin over a period of time, but as things started crashing, I really took my eyes off of it. And uh, as I started getting more and more deeper into crypto about, you know, the, the indicators around it, the things that are being developed, I was just trading based off of what I was seeing in price action and things like that. I wasn't looking at primarily the fundamentals of these cycles. And what changed for me is when I started to understand more about central banking, when I started to understand more about finance and how these governments have debased currencies for hundreds and hundreds of years, for centuries, and even from other empires, the government has always devalued the money they reach some sort of superiority status and then devalue it so that way they can go buy up more assets. So they can go buy up or even make the whole world on their monetary system so they continue to have leverage and power over nations, people, et cetera. And once I started to understand that and I realized how decentralized Bitcoin was and really the whole premise behind it, that's when I started going back into it pretty heavily. So now from an investment perspective, again, this is a very speculative asset class. And so you could buy it today and then it goes to zero tomorrow and then may go to 100 grand, you know, in a year or so, right? But the point is, is that if you look at the fundamentals of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I personally don't think it's going anywhere because we have a lot of institutional money on the sidelines really wanting to come into the space. Uh, and they're just waiting for a lot of regulatory, you know, policies to come through because they are moving a lot of money. They want to make sure that they're protected and they can move and manipulate the market. So in order to see that change and be ahead of the curve, it's really important, in my perspective and my investment thesis to buy now because we're underneath this green line here. And as you continue to accumulate, let's say the cycle continues to extend out over the next two years, we may see a topping above $100,000, $120,000, which is really just being indicated by these graphs here, right? And so just using simple, you know, predictability, looking at previous indicators, something that's been reliable, that's been pretty darn accurate over the past three cycles, like this indicator here, uh, I would say it's pretty a uh, good bet, a uh, really a a 4x bet that you're looking at or risk to reward, you know, having some upside there. Uh, I see this not only Bitcoin going way higher in the future, but right now being a great time to accumulate just because of the timing of what's happened with the US economy, what's happened with, you know, the government printing a bunch of money. Now we're relying with Bitcoin considering there's only about 2 million left. So uh, my, my thing is I want to continue to create digital wealth with the digital cash flow that I have. And so I continue to dollar cost average into this. So I hope that provided some value. You. I hope that you like and subscribe. We talk about crypto and Bitcoin and stuff on this channel along with e-commerce because again, digital cash flow and digital wealth is the way of the future. And the people that align themselves with that and with the trends of where the money's going typically tend to get uh, rewarded and have upside. So can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.